piece 159, the city of Cusco, and it includes three images and I'm going to cover them all, you know, all the form of each, all the function, all the content, all the context. So um, the identifiers, these are, this is location, Central Highlands, Peru, and this would be the uh, culture, the Inca, and andesite is the type of stone that is used for this construction. So, oh, let's, we're dealing with the city plan. We're dealing with the Cori Concha. It's the Incan main temple. And then the walls of Sasquawaman. All of the, the context is the same for each of the three images and actually for every piece that is an Inca piece. They all focus around this emperor, Pachacuti, who is the first emperor of the Incan empire. And he had, like lots of emperors, the liberty of renaming himself. And he named himself Pacha, which is the word for both time and space. So infers really the world. And he also had the kuti, which is upheaval or reversal. It's like throwing all the cards in the air and restarting from scratch. So he reversed all of time and space, he felt in that he took from the city of Cusco uh, a conquering that got him all this area in purple. And he started essentially the Peruvian Inca empire. <clears throat> More context that applies to all is that this empire is located in, a, in the highland area of the Andes mountains. It spread along the entire coast of South America between 2,500, 3,000 miles, huge. And in order to make this empire uh, united, they had all of these roads spanning 15 to 20,000 miles. And that road system, because it is so intact, like you see right here, is considered the largest archeological uh, site in the world today. Included with roads, were these rope bridges and the use of fiber is a highly, highly valued skill, more valued than gold, goldsmithing. So fiber bridges still in use today. <clears throat> okay, let's look at all the form. The form of the city of Cusco plan is that it is made in the shape of a puma. At 11,000 feet high, the city of Cusco's people were in contact with the puma. Literally. And so the puma is the strongest animal in this ecosystem. Why wouldn't you make a city shaped out of it? To make this city shape, the form had to be shaped by a river waterway. So these outside edges are actually canals of river that have been created. And this is the joining of those two canals in the river, making the tail of the puma. The Cori Cancha, which is the Inca main temple, is in terms of form right here. The remnant is this. It's a rock wall um, and it is um, called the Golden House because it was in terms of form covered with gold. Amazing. Uh, now, also in terms of form, the Spanish built on top of, they kind of destroyed, left some of the foundation what what they destroyed they took they took the walls at spoilia they took the rock that was there from the uh temple the golden temple the golden house and they turned it into their spanish baroque we were know baroque and they made it into a convent so what a message no we're going to take your most prized possession we're going to put our stuff on top of it i mean that's a serious message of control and here is where, in terms of form, this would have been located. I guess that's kind of context. It was located here on the um, top hind part of the puma. More form. The stones that were used to create the Cori Cancha, you can see here, were uh, carved to be uniform. This is called ashlar masonry. When we take uniform rock si rocks or stones, excuse me, and we put them together, uh, that's ashlar masonry. Now, the Inca went a little bit further and they did not use any 
mortar in between these stones. So this is just stone resting on stone. The benefit of that is that when there's an earthquake, which there were many, these stone walls would just move. <clears throat> they weren't kept together like, you know, with cement, so to speak. Okay, and then the third piece, the walls at Sasquawaman, that in terms of form, these are the same as the Coricancha, because here we have stones that are placed together perfectly without mortar. You can see here these little indents coming out. Those are little handholds. So it's kind of like the process has been left for us to see because these handholds or rope holds, rope would have gone around those to move them up into, into place. They weren't carved or shaved off. Okay, and in terms of form, these walls at Sasquawaman are located at the head of the puma. And here, more form for you to see the polygonal. So unlike the Coricancha Ashler masonry, the walls at Sasquawaman have polygonal shape to them. Uh, it would have taken 20,000 people 20 years to create this, and they weren't done by the time the Spanish arrived in 1535. Okay, content. For the design of the city of the Puma, the city of Cusco, um, it's divided in, you can see kind of lower and upper, but it's also more divided into four parts. And these four parts represent the land of four quarters, which is the name of the Inca Empire, which is uh, Tuantin Suyu, which is land of four quarters. So people that um, lived in one of the four quarters of the empire would have brought been brought and would have known where in the four quarters of the city they were to live. In terms of content for the Coricancha temple, um, it was filled with gold. This is a computer rendition of it, but the interior walls were also, you know, dedicated to the sun god Inti. And so, you know, what better product to reflect the sun than gold? There was a garden on the inside, which is going to be the subject of our next image. And uh, we think there might have been an observatory here, too. The right, the sun god, the moon goddess, uh, those are the um, important aspects of the religion. And so probably there was an observatory looking at those. Okay, in terms of function, I've already mentioned that in the terms of the city plan, there were four quarters. And so way incredible control by the Inca Empire would have been to bring, uh, you know, the sons of the leaders of the regions that were conquered, bring them into the city of Cusco, make them live there and make them learn the Inca ways. And so uh, these boy, men, young men would have been brought to each of these four quarters and they would have lived in their assigned quarter. And women, chosen women from all areas of the empire were also brought here and they were kept captive. And here they would have made the great um, beer out of corn and they made uh, textile clothing that we're going to see in a couple images from now. Bottom line, the function of this is that it is the heart of the empire. It's the locus of control designed like a puma to emulate all that power of that incredible large cat. Then the function of the Kori Kancha, the Inca main temple, is that it is dedicated to the sun god. And this is the most important temple in the Inca empire because it's in the most important city, the heart of the empire. And so from this temple were radiating imaginary lines to the rest of the Cusco Valley. And um, some say that this would have been used to mark time, like a big sundial, sun calendar. Then the function of the walls at Sasquawaman, we don't know. Um, it seems like it was might, probably intended to be a fortress, but that leads us to this idea that the Inca did not have a writing system that has been readable or broken down. And the Spanish who conquered the Inca did not always ask all the questions that got us to any answers. They had diaries that we're learning from, but they didn't ask necessarily all the questions that archaeologists or art historians would have asked today. 
Okay, so this is the city of Cusco. Amazing use of stonework. 